Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very sad day. It's a sad day because for the first time in the history of me owning this truck, it didn't start. We're gonna find out why here in just a second. Not good. Obviously we know there's something power related going on. When I turn the ignition on, we get the interior lights, the radio comes on, overhead interior lights are on. We are getting power, but as I try to engage the starter, you can hear the starter try to engage and turn the motor, but it seems like from what I can hear, a lack of power coming from the battery to the starter to turn the engine. So we're gonna start there. And how nifty is that? These new Chevys, look at that. Service battery charging system. Interesting. No idea it did that. So the first thing I wanna check is the actual terminals to make sure two things are going on. The first thing is that they are tight and snug as well as the condition of the terminals. Okay, so taking a look at the terminals, we have our positive side and our negative side. Typically, you would want to pull the negative side off before messing with the positive side because you can be messing with the positive side, hit part of your you know, fender, some bare metal, it can spark, it can you know, give you a little shock, maybe kill you, maybe not, but always start with your negative side, pull that off first and then pull off your positive side. As you can see there, that's a whole lot of crap that just fell out. Now what that actually does a lot of the time is decrease the amount of voltage that actually gets to your starter. That being said, our first step is to clean all that crap off and then we'll hook it back up and see if we can get the truck to start. Let's see if it starts. Okay, ignition is on. Not all cars have this, but this is my battery voltmeter. As you can see, it's still extremely low, just above nine volts. So I'm not really optimistic, but let's see if it starts. Nope. So as the truck dashboard read, we have barely over nine volts. It isn't always 100% accurate coming from the dash, but it shows the battery is extremely low. So the next step would be to figure out how much voltage the battery is actually holding. So that means we get to go pick up a new toy. Um, what we're going to need is a multimeter. It's a real cheap, simple tool that reads the volts or amperage of an electrical charge. So that being said, we're going to run to the store and have a Lone Star Hawaiian new toy moment. <laughs> We have here is a simple multimeter tool. What you want to do is set it up to DCV or DC volts, somewhere around 15 volts. This one we have the option of 20, so we're gonna set up to 20 volts. You're gonna take the positive side and negative side, touch them to the terminals of the battery, self explanatory. Again, my battery should re be reading somewhere around 12.6 volts. It's been sitting for a few days, so it might be a little bit lower, but again, should be around 12.6 volts. So we have the positive side, we have the negative side. As you can see, it's reading 10.4 volts, which is extremely low. 
Um, again, looking back to the dash, it's good to know my dash is pretty dang accurate. Uh, it was showing just above nine volts, so 10.4. So now that I know my battery's low, my next step would be to jump start the truck, get it running. That way I can tell how much voltage is coming from my alternator back to the battery. As the engine runs, the alternator should be recharging the battery. So the question is always, hey, is my alternator bad or is my battery bad? Because if you go and replace your battery and in turn your alternator was bad, you're gonna drain your battery, most likely ruin a brand new battery, and then you're out a hundred or so dollars. So again, the question is always, is it this or that? Is it the alternator or the battery? So just to make sure I'm gonna be replacing the correct part, I'm gonna jumpstart the truck, let it run and see what kind of voltage I'm getting out of the alternator back to the battery. Time to jumpstart the truck, but first we're gonna appreciate a quick Hawaiian sunset moment. I'm actually gonna back the car in. This will be a first for me. Back the car in, jump from the trunk to the truck and see if we can get it started. Now, as soon as the engine starts, we're going to see this number hopefully increase substantially. Now, normally running, your battery should be reading around 14 volts. Anywhere between 12, six and 13, you're not really recharging your battery. Um, around the 14 range is where you wanna be. 14 to 14.7 is normal operating. Above 14.7, you're actually doing damage to your battery by overcharging it. So as soon as the engine starts, we should see this number come up. Hopefully it does. That way I don't have to replace the alternator and just need to replace the battery. All right, we got the thing hooked up right now. Finally on the Mercedes, this should start right up. And there it is. Okay, the truck's finally started. You can probably hardly hear me, but what to do now once the truck is running, go ahead and turn all of your accessories on that you do have. Turn your fan on, turn on your radio, turn on your overhead lights, make sure your headlights are on. We're gonna check the charge coming from the alternator back to the battery. It should read between 14 and 14.7. So let's go ahead and hook up this multimeter to the negative and positive side of the battery and we'll see what it reads. About 14.3 volts while running. And again, that is absolutely perfect and where we wanna be while the truck is running. So we now know the problem is the battery. Unfortunately, it looks like either the battery has just gone bad won't hold a charge and to be honest i kind of assumed that so i could tell over the last few months the battery was getting weaker and weaker i'm going to turn this off so the battery was getting weaker and weaker as time went on um i could tell starting it up every time you start it the starter would turn over a little bit slower and unfortunately this last time it was down to a point of not being able long story short the battery's bad let's run to the auto parts store Grab another battery, slap that in there, and when we should be good to go. Jeez. All right. Oh, that's a lot of awkward weight. flying past everybody and decides he's gonna come on in here got a number on the back windshield so obviously a race car and at the same time this chick behind me she's been driving with her headlights off for the past about five miles still hasn't figured it out 
Hey, she figured out where her blinker is. And it's not like these roads are lit either. It's pitch black out here. And here she comes. Our battery should have a 12.6 volt charge. So again, just came back from the auto parts store and we are at 12.56, 12.57, so call it 12.6. Awesome. All right, let's slap this thing in there, call it good. All right, so quick update. Battery's in, but I'm not done. It turns out, I didn't even know this, the bracket that's supposed to hold this battery secured to the truck is non-existent. So uh, when I pulled that old battery out, I literally just unhooked it and lifted it out of there. So what we're doing right now is building a, a simple bracket to mount that battery in the truck. So if there's any you know sudden turns, jarring, emergency braking situations, the battery's not gonna go flying. So, um, so far, we're building a little bracket to secure that in place. Okay, so there we have it. Battery is installed, that bracket right there, just fabricated that. Works just perfect, keeps the battery in place. And the moment of truth. Under 14, over 10, that looks good. Here we go. And ladies and gentlemen, we are good. Okay, we are just back from our test drive and everything works perfectly. And that bracket that I was talking about that had a fabricate, it's right down there below that red wire, holds the battery in real nice and is exactly what we needed. The alternator we tested works perfect, which is nice to know. And it was in fact a bad battery. So that being said, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more. Aloha and have a great night. We'll see you next time.